Welcome to our review on controlling body temperature. First thing to make sure that you know is what normal human body temperature actually is. Hopefully you know this just from general knowledge, but if not, it is 37 degrees Celsius. Now, what we find is our body has to be kept within a very narrow range around that 37 degrees because that's the optimum temperature for all of these enzymes that are inside our body carrying out various chemical reactions to actually work at. So we've got to make sure our body stays around 37 so the optimum temperature for the enzymes is reached. So what we need to do is consider what happens if we either get too cold or if we get too hot. So first situation we're going to look at is what happens if we get too cold. So what we find there is our core body temperature, and the core is where all your organs are, if that drops, then what we find enzyme reactions occur too slowly to actually maintain the rate at which we need for all of these basic life processes to occur. One of the key ones being respiration. So if our core body temperature is too low, the enzyme reaction for respiration is too low, and therefore we don't release enough energy so cells start to die. Really serious problem will occur if our core body temperature drops below 35 degrees Celsius because then we're at risk of this condition called hypothermia. If we see the opposite scenario and we get too hot then that's where our core body temperature is above 40 to 42 degrees Celsius. Now, at that kind of temperature, what's going to happen to our enzymes is that they may well undergo that process of denaturing. Therefore, the active site has changed shape. They no longer fit with the substrate, and so reactions cannot occur. And as a result of this, you could very well die. So it's quite serious. So in order to avoid these scenarios of becoming either too hot or too cold, then our body has a control mechanism built in. So what we actually have within our skin, we've got receptor cells that are able to monitor the external temperature. We also have internal receptor cells which monitor the temperature of our blood on a constant basis. Those two types of receptors will send information to our thermoregulatory centre within the brain. And if there's a change in temperature, then what happens is it will send impulses to the effectors to then bring the temperature back to normal. So what we can see here is an example of this process called homeostasis. Now you do need to know the definition for homeostasis, which is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. So in this case, we're maintaining the temperature of our internal environment, the body. You need to be able to explain the changes that occur when you are either too hot or when you are too cold. So you will find there'll be two potential types of questions we can get here. One will be to list or state some features of when you get too hot or too cold. The other one would be to explain. Now, if it's a state question, you literally just need to put down the change. You don't need to say what it does. If it's an explain, you need to put down the change and then say how that's going to help you regulate your body temperature. So first one we've got there is the body hairs are going to lie flat against the skin to prevent air being trapped because air is a really good insulator. And therefore, if we're not trapping that insulating layer against our skin, we can lose heat more easily from our body, therefore keeping us cooler. Second one is that our sweat glands will produce sweat. And what we find there is as the sweat sits on the surface of the body, then water will evaporate. And as a result, the energy is transferred from your body to the surroundings, again, lowering your body temperature. Last one on there, vasodilation. So this is where your blood vessels, which supply the capillaries near the skin, actually widen. So that means there's an increased blood flow through those capillaries so more heat is lost via radiation to the surroundings. Go careful on vasodilation. Don't say that the blood vessels move closer to the surface of the skin. They don't, okay? Your skin still has those layers preventing it getting closer to the surface. The key difference here is that in vasodilation, then they've increased the blood flow through the capillaries, so we lose more heat via radiation. 
if we now consider what happens when you're too cold, it's pretty much the opposite of what we see when you're too hot. The body hairs are going to rise and therefore trap this layer of air against the skin, which then insulates our body. The sweat glands are going to stop producing sweat so we don't lose heat through that evaporation process. We then see this process called vasoconstriction occurring, which is where those blood vessels that supply the capillaries near the surface of the skin become narrow, and that reduces the blood flow and therefore the heat loss. And then the last one is shivering. So that's where your muscles contract and relax really quickly. And that means that your cells are going to be respiring faster and that transfers extra energy to make you feel warmer. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now explain the importance of maintaining this constant internal environment and define the term homeostasis. You can describe how overheating or cooling can affect the body and you can describe the function of the skin in controlling body temperature, as well as explaining how our body responds to these different temperature changes.